Hey everyone, welcome to CA Church. We are so happy you've joined us today. My name is Alyssa, and because I work as an assistant in our missions department, I feel uniquely qualified to let you know that this weekend is Missions Weekend at Coquitlam Alliance. Missions Weekend is a time that we get to spend together giving thanks for and reflecting on all that God has done through our church and missions, both locally here in the Tri-Cities and globally around the world. We know that for some of you, this may be your first time attending a church service, and that for others you have attended for years. We also recognize that for some, online can feel a little strange. But we are so thankful to have this opportunity to connect with you today, and we're especially glad that we can celebrate the good news of Jesus together. So later on today, we are going to hear a special report from our missions pastor, Diane. But right now, would you join us as we spend time in worship to God? Kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. Spoken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, a lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him Our God is the Lamb The Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Yes, every knee will bow before Him the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion is Judah. He's roaring with power. And fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, He's the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Yes, every knee will bow before Him. Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? No who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord? Our God. Our God is a lion, a lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. And our God is the Lamb. He's the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Yes, every knee will bow.
spirit fill me till my cup overflows. I hide the part before me. My desire, I give you control. Take all, take all of me. I yours to leave. With all my yours, I see. Lord, you dwell with me.
things I see And all I have needed Thy hands have provided Great is Thy faithfulness Lord unto me Summer and winter and springtime Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. time of the service where we take our offering. If this is your first time here, please know we are not coming after your money. The giving of our finances is just something that we as Christians do because we believe in the mission of our church and want to support it. If you would like to donate, there will be instructions on the screen below. Well, everyone, as it is Missions Weekend, we'd love to share with you a few ways for you to be involved in missions here at CA Church. First is translation. We are so fortunate to have a wonderful team of volunteers who have come together with a desire to serve our community by translating our church services into subtitles of a different language. We are excited to announce that our online services are now being translated into Spanish and Farsi. To access these subtitles, you simply click on the gear icon below this screen. We want to make it as easy as possible for anyone to hear the good news of Jesus, so please do not hesitate to let your friends or family know about this service. Also, if you're interested in joining our translation team, you can sign up at cachurch.info. Secondly, CA Missions has partnered with Flourish Stoneware to support Tarahumaran women through our global partner in Mexico. Flourish Stoneware is handmade and individually crafted jewelry that is made from clay and porcelain. We will also be selling colorful embroidered masks shipped directly to us from Mexico. When you purchase any mask or stoneware, all proceeds go towards supporting Tara Marn women living in the Copper Canyon and their local business endeavors. To check out these beautiful items, simply visit cachurch.info. We'd also like to let you know about the mission of the month. February's mission will be House of Omid. Omid is actually the Persian word for hope. 
House of Omid offers hope, spiritual encouragement, and practical help to refugees and newcomers to Canada as they make the huge adjustment of starting their lives in a new, unfamiliar society and culture. In fact, later in the service, we will get the opportunity to hear from Ahmed, the founder of House of Omid. You can get involved with House of Omid by giving or by volunteering. Connect with us again at cachurch.info. So in just a moment, we are going to hear from Diane as she shares with us a report of all that God has been doing in missions throughout this past year. Would you join us in prayer as we prepare our hearts to listen? Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we could come together online as a church body today. And Lord, we know that for some online can be difficult, but we are just so grateful to be reminded that we are not alone, that you are with us and that we have a community of support. So Lord, would you just prepare our hearts today to hear what it is you have for us. And God, we are so excited to hear what is happening locally through Coquitlam and in missions and all over the world. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hi everybody. Today is our missions weekend financial report. And because of COVID, it's going to look a little bit different this year. Just like everything else in our lives looks different right now. Being online and unable to meet together brings a very different dynamic. Nevertheless, I am excited about sharing today and focusing on what God has been doing in and through CA Church Missions in 2020. 2020 was quite the year. A year where we experienced things we never could have imagined. As 2021 rolled in, we repeatedly heard, Good riddance to a horrible year, we want to forget it. But in spite of our bad memories, I would like to propose and prove to you that God was good and He was faithful. The scripture that comes to mind is Lamentations 2 verses 22 to 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. I believe that God demonstrated the promises of these verses repeatedly throughout 2020. I knew deep in my heart that He was at work in a unique way through all that the world was experiencing. But there were many times where I questioned and wondered what He was doing. Would He provide? Would we have enough money to fulfill our commitments to international workers, to national pastors and missionaries? Would we be able to support the orphans and those living in extreme poverty with food and clothing? Their situations were so much more desperate than ours. Would we be able to support our global partners in the various churches abroad that we are helping to establish? Would we have enough to support the four refugee families that we sponsored? And would we have enough to continue our food pantry for families in our own community? I will confess to you that I had moments of doubt and worry. I even began to hoard our resources as I was trying to spread them out over the year. The first half of the year looked pretty grim. Let me remind you of what Lamentation says again. I'm also reminding myself. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. The big lesson for me this year was not that the Lord's compassions did not fail, not even once. His mercy was new every morning, and His faithfulness was more than great. It was huge. It was miraculous. A few times we chose to step out in faith and obedience. We decided to send out food hampers into our own community. None of this was in our budget. Yet every week when we purchased food, I mentally made a note of the receipts for thousands of dollars in my head. And somehow our food pantry account never diminished. Every financial report, the balance of the account hovered around the same significant amount. I felt like I was living out the story of Elisha and the widow. The more we poured out, the more our jar continued to flow. God was faithful. I had a video call with the leader of one of our global partners in the fall, and he reminded me of my commitment to them, which had been established before the pandemic hit. We had sent some money to them, but I was holding on, trying to stretch every penny we had. I told him I would send one more chunk of money in October, 
but that would most likely be all we could do this year. I told him I would send this in faith that God would provide. Well, you can only guess what happened. Immediately after the donation had been sent, we received more funds. So what I sent in October, I was able to also send in November, and then again to repeat that in December. And now we still have another $36,000 to send in January. Our jar is overflowing. God is faithful. Our Christmas offering was also a test of my faith. I will admit I set the bar low because we would not be gathering in person and I just didn't know if people would be inclined to give online or to catch the vision and the burden of the need. In the end, we had the largest Christmas offering we have ever had, $187,000. I knew immediately that God was doing something great for reasons that only He knows. He chose to use CA Church as a conduit of His grace and provision. We are so blessed to witness His goodness and His faithfulness. Even in the midst of a pandemic, where many have lost their jobs, God has proven that He owns it all, and He will continue to pour out His compassion, His mercy, and to demonstrate His faithfulness. We were able to finish the race in 2020 and fulfilled all our commitments to international worker support, to feeding 1,200 orphans and many more families in poverty every day in Mexico, the Philippines, and in Zimbabwe. We supported many national churches and their pastors in Mexico and the Middle East. We witnessed baptisms in the most difficult areas of the world to be a Christian. And we supported Metro World Child in Manila, reaching thousands of families in poverty. We also continue to support the three orphanages that we have been working with uh, through daily operations in Mexico, the Philippines, and Zimbabwe. And we supported four refugee families here in Coquitlam. We handed out thousands of food hampers in Coquitlam and the surrounding communities. We continued our support for Hope for Freedom and their recovery houses. And we supported our newest partnership, House of Omid, here in Coquitlam. So our total giving to missions in 2020 was $1.2 million, and that does not include any short-term missions this year. God displayed His faithfulness through each of you as you gave this year. Thank you, and let's praise God together for His faithfulness. I want to move on and explain one of the greatest privileges I have is working with our global and local partners. The leaders of these ministries have become my close friends. And to me, the leaders of these ministries are what I call Heaven's Hall of Famers. They are committed, dedicated, gifted leaders for the cause of the gospel in their own setting and culture. I'm so blessed to rub shoulders with them. I've missed not traveling to see many of them this year. But it has provided an opportunity to work much more closely with our local partner, the House of Omid. House of Omid means House of Hope. They work with the thousands of Persians and new immigrants in Canada in the greater Vancouver area. The founder and director of House of Omid is Ahmad. Ahmad is one of those people who is inspiring, godly, courageous, determined, and impacting our world beyond what you can imagine. I have great respect for him and how God is using him. Born blind, he has let nothing stop him from following the call of God. He's a Canadian Olympian in the Paralympics for goalball. Today, I want you to meet Ahmed and to hear his story as CA Church continues to develop a partnership with this great ministry. Thanks, Ahmed, for being with us today. We're blessed to have you. Hi, my brothers and sisters at Kukulam Alliance Church. It's such a joy to be with you today. I would like to tell you a little bit of my story and uh, what God has done in my life. I was born physically blind in a Muslim family in Iran. And from a very early childhood, I felt a huge void in my heart. And this void was with me all the time. And I blamed this at my physical weakness. I thought um, why I was born blind and 
this weakness uh, uh, making me look bad. And I was trying to uh, fill this void in my heart all the time. So since early childhood, I started to uh, pray to God, to beg God uh, to help me fill this uh, void and incontentness uh, in my heart. I prayed to God, I fasted, I went to the mosque, uh, but there was never a response from Allah. He, uh, he was always far away. Uh, he never heard my cries. I never encountered a, a, a spiritual experience from him. I always was calling him and doing rituals, but he never responded. So that really made me uh, uh, go away from God and try other things because I, was, I still had this void in my heart. Um, so I tried to do acting, I tried music, but none of these worked. And uh, I needed to, to find something uh, to satisfy myself. So I, I found this amazing sport of goalball, at, which is a Paralympic sport for people who are blind. And I started playing that and I thought, yay, this, this feels good. And you know, I became good at this and I became part of the Iranian national team. And I thought maybe this is what I'm looking for. Um, and uh, my goal was to uh, win the Paralympic, uh, win world championships, and qualify for the Paralympic Games. And so we worked so hard until uh, a couple la years later, we did uh, win world championships and we qualified for the Paralympic Games. But in that moment that we reached our goal uh, of uh, qualifying for Paralympic Games. I felt somebody dumped a bucket of ice water on me. I felt empty all over again. I started feeling this void in my heart uh, again. So um, there are some other circumstances at this time of my life that happened that I started thinking I cannot what I am looking for inside Iran. I needed to go. I needed to leave. So what I did is I decided to leave my team. I decided to leave my job, my family and moved to Turkey to, to go to the West, uh, to, the west uh, to uh, 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 immigrate and try to uh, find what I'm looking for there. Everybody told me that was a crazy decision and don't do that, but me being stubborn, I did. I moved to Turkey and the first day I realized that was a crazy decision. Imagine a blind uh, a guy in a foreign country, you don't speak the language, uh, you don't know anybody, uh, uh, just such a hard situation. And that situation really made me go through a heavy depression. I became depressed and um, I was sick and suicidal back then in Turkey. And until uh, I got introduced to an American man to help me with my, to write a letter to uh, UNHCR. And I went to meet this man, very spectacle of, you know, I didn't know, you know, never met an American before. I went there and I was surprised. He was a kind man. He loved me and he was a missionary. I didn't know that at the time. And he helped me with my paperwork. And then this kind man turned to be a jerk. He started talking about the weirdest things I ever heard in my life. He said, Jesus was God or he was son of God. And I'm like, what happened to you? What are you talking about? Uh, we always told that Jesus was a prophet, and then here he's telling me he is God. I uh, never looked at this uh, uh, from this angle in my life. And then he told me another thing that really made me upset, and he talked about sin, and he said, we are sinners. And I'm like, no, you are a sinner. You know, I never thought in my life that I was a sinner, and I thought God sinned against me uh, to make me blind. That was the biggest question of my life. Anyway, and uh, he invited me to go to his church, and I went to his church in the intention of making him a Muslim. And that's when I first became a missionary. So um, I started going to church, and that was another surprise. You know, everybody's happy, worshiping, and I'd never been to a church before. So this was an amazing experience. And I started uh, uh, listening to the Bible with the audio Bible that they gave me, and um, all this experience was feeling good. But at the time that I was in the church, I would go back home. I again, I am suicidal. And, uh, uh, and I have all these bad thoughts and, and bitter about life and, and my experience uh, in Turkey and uh, my physical blindness. So um, to make the long story short, I, uh, I liked everything I saw in the church, in the Bible. 
uh, but I couldn't believe it because I needed uh, to see. I I heard people getting saying that you know Jesus healed them, and this became uh, very interesting to me. I said, "Okay, Jesus, if I, you, you want me to believe in you, you have to open my eyes." And I uh, started to make this uh, a, a condition for God to believe in Him. And uh, one day when I woke up, uh, this is in Turkey, and I thought this would be the last day of my life. What I did, I went to the kitchen, I took all the pills that we have in the house, and I thought when my roommates leave, I will drink all these pills and I end this life because what's the point of this life? And on that day, um, um, I remember before my roommate leaves, he, he turned on my uh, CD player, my audio uh, uh, Bible, and he left. And, and at this time, I, w- I had a glass of water and all these pills that I wanted to take, but I was in different state that I would remember the things that I heard in the church and I heard in the Bible. And I remembered that the pastor told me, talk to Jesus directly. And I had never done that uh, by that time. So what I did, I, I told him, I said, Jesus, I liked what I saw, but I can't believe in you until you open my eyes. You have to show me. I have to see. And then all of a sudden, my attention went to the audio Bible that was playing, and it was reading from John chapter 20. And I realized that Thomas was saying the exact same thing that I was saying. Believe, uh, I have to see uh, to believe. And Jesus came and said, but blessed be those who did not see but yet believed. And that was a striking, a striking situation for me. I all of a sudden I thought to myself, I have uh, uh, never seen most of the things that I believe in in my life, including my mom. And and I'm like, why not this one? So I uh, bowed down. I went on my knees. I said, Lord, even though you didn't open my eyes, I want to believe in you. I want to be blessed. I want to be one of those who are, who are blessed. And I don't. I want all these things that the Bible says and the Christian says happen to me. I don't want to be in this situation. And I gave my heart to Jesus. And I remember the clouds of depressions were going away. I felt joy and peace. And I cannot describe that moment in my life. And, and Jesus has started uh, to changing my life. I was this excited person and I wanted to evangelize the whole world. I was telling my family, my people uh, about Jesus, but I still had this big question in my life, why I was born blind. And uh, this question lingered with me until one day I was reading the Bible. I was uh, uh, reading the Bible, doing this devotion. I was making list of the things that I could do for God. And in John chapter 9, they told, uh, the disciple told Jesus why this man was born blind. And this was my question. And Jesus said, you know, neither he sinned or, or his parents, but God wanted to glorify through his blindness. And I'm like, God spoke to my heart that he didn't want none of these things that I wanted to do for him. He wanted to glorify through my blindness. So I gave it. I, you know, with open arms, I gave my blindness to God. I said, Lord, you may glorify through my blindness. And um, I want to encourage you today. Um, I tried to hide my weakness for a long time, to not show it. And, uh, um, but God wanted that. You know, God turns our sorrows, our pain, to service for himself. Let me tell you this. God never wastes hurt. God wants us to give him all our weaknesses, all our flaws, so he can be glorified through them. He made us. He made flaws in us purposely so we are unique and through that we could glorify him today anyway so this became um my ministry you know until today in my office at the house of omid when people come i tell them do you want to talk uh, about uh, uh do you want me to show you how to see and they're like how what are you talking about and i tell them about spiritual blindness god opened the eyes of my heart and this is what people need today. So 
um, through that, God changed me a lot, and, and um, he opened a door for me to come to Canada in 2009, and I got married to my beautiful wife, Dina, who was, by the way, an Alliance missionary when I got married um, uh, to her, and we knew we we're going to serve God, and we were thinking and praying, God, what do you want us to do? And at this time, we were volunteering in a lot of, you know, uh, a refugee organization. We were both come from a refugee background, and we had heart uh, for refugees. But we thought we're probably going to go to Middle East and serve God. Until one day, God spoke to both of our hearts, and He wanted us to serve the uh, uh, newcomers and refugees, the Muslim community in the Lower Mainland. Uh, back then, the statistics showed there was 200,000 Muslims in the low and mainland, and half of them were Persian speaking, and significant of them also were Arabic speaking, where me and my wife also speak Arabic. So we knew that we we're gonna stay here, and we started praying about God, what you want us to do, how uh, we can make an impact uh, in our community for the gospel. Look, I was a newcomer. I was a, a needy refugee. I was blind. So many people helped me. But if somebody didn't have the courage to share the gospel with me, I would have been dead. I would have committed suicide back then. So when we were praying, God gave me a vision of a house on top of 12 pillars. I didn't know. I start praying about what is this vision that I'm seeing day and night. And God spoke to our heart that he wanted a place and a settlement agency that is not supported by government grants, but is supported by 12 churches as his 12 pillars uh, to provide settlement services to newcomers and refugees, but through those services, freely share the gospel. So with that, you know, with lots of prayers and, and churches getting behind uh, uh, the House of Omid, the House of Omid started in 2016. And we have three elements at the House of Omid. Our first element is providing settlement services to newcomers and refugees. And through those services, we share the gospel. Our second element is to strengthen the Persian church in the lower mainland. And we do that through conferences, studies. We have a library. Um, we do have a stadium where we produce discipleship materials and evangelism materials. And our third element is to strengthen the underground church of Iran. And this is a, a an element that is a, a secret. We don't talk about it a lot because there's people's life involved in that. Uh, but I want you to pray for these elements because they're very important. You, Kukula Malayans, have been such a blessing to us. Um, it's been over a year that we have partnered with Kukula Malayans. From bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for your contribution, for your love to our community. You have fed people, you have provided liter literature, material, and the base with by supporting the House of Omid for many people to receive help uh, physically and spiritually. I want to uh, let you know that today there are more Iranians have accepted the Lord in the last 15 years than the entire 14 years of Islam history. And that have happened through contribution uh, of churches and peoples like yourselves. Today, God is moving in an amazing way uh, 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 in, in the hearts of Persians through dreams uh, uh, and through visions. And you have been part of it. You might not have seen it firsthand, but I want to tell you uh, how much uh, your contribution, your partnership means to me, to the House of Omid, and to our community. You have blessed uh, our people significantly. Um, this works like a chain. Um, the statistic says every Iranian that lives outside Iran has at least seven family members back in Iran. And when I became a Christian, none of my uh, family members were Christian. Now the majority of them are. 
when I became Christian, I was excited. I called them and I told them about Jesus. And this has been happening through what you are doing. Through our partnerships, we have served many, many families, a lot of time with their physical needs, and many time we share the gospel with them. For example, on December 12, uh, people came to Kukulam Alliance Church and picked up hampers, but at the same time, they were given a Bible, a New Testament, and a purpose-driven life book. A lot of time in our, in our lifetime, we might not see what happened to people, but what we are doing to them right now, what we're giving them right now, it will make a difference in their life. Let me put it in a short story, in an illustration that I always use uh, for my ministry, working with Muslims. When I was very new to Canada, I went to Calgary with the British Columbia goalball team for a tournament. And um, I decided to stay back in the gym and watch some more games while my team went back to the hotel. After a couple hours, I decided to take the shuttle back to the hotel. So I got up, I opened my white cane, and I started walking towards the shuttle. And then this man, uh, who was randomly there, he decided to uh, help this blind guy to get wherever he wanted to get. So he came, and he um, started guiding me. Turns out he was from Newfoundland. And I want you to imagine his accent and my broken English and being blind, and he was trying to guide me. So, and by the way, he was very talkative. So he was talking to me and telling me things, and I did not understand what he's saying. So um, I decided that, you know, when I said what, he repeated the same thing, and I didn't understand again. So I decided to say to him, yes, okay, so, you know, be a short walk and it'll be finished. So I said, yes, okay, and went really well until he started saying something I didn't understand. I said, yeah. He repeats the same thing again, and I said, yeah, sure, and I hear him, hears it for, uh, he repeats it for a third time louder, and I still didn't understand, but at this time, I found myself falling down the stairs, and I'm like, oh, that's what you mean, and I uh, see this in my ministry reaching out to Muslims in, in, in many occasions when uh, we tell them something they don't understand. And at some point, they decide to uh, say that they are understanding. They're like, yeah, yeah, sure, we love Jesus. Jesus is like that. But they don't really understand what we are saying. But in my experience with people, there will be a time, there will be a point that they will fall down these stairs. And they were like, oh, that's what you are saying. So I want, you, I want to encourage you today with, with two things. One is keep doing what you're doing. You're contributing uh, to God's kingdom in a very significant way. Um, politicians, uh, governments have tried to solve uh, the the issues and the atrocities that are going back uh, going uh, going on in in Middle East and everything in the Muslim world, but let me tell you, the only hope is Jesus. The only hope is the gospel. And the second thing that I want to leave you with: give your weaknesses to God. If there's something in your life that you think it's your weakness, this is what God wants today to use for his gospel mission. God used my blindness, something that all my life I thought it was my weakness for his glory. And he wants to use your weaknesses for his glory. Thank you and God bless you. Thanks to Anne and Ahmed for sharing. We are so grateful for this partnership with House of Omid, and we look forward to continue serving together and praying for each other. Like many of you watching, I am moved to hear about all that God is doing through our church, both here locally and through our global partners all around the world. For me, it is a powerful reminder of God's faithfulness even amidst difficult times. And I'm thankful we could take time today to pause and reflect upon all the great things that God has done. 
Normally at this time in the service, we would have some discussion questions available, but today we'd like to share with you a bonus feature of sorts where you can hear an update from our dear friends and partners, Pastor Tomas and Brenda down in Mexico. If you would like prayer or maybe just someone to speak with, please do not hesitate to click on the prayer button to speak with the host directly. All right, that's it for me. I am so happy to have hosted you today, and I'd like to leave you with these verses found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Have a great week, church. It's a pleasure for me to be able to speak to you through this means this time. And be able to open my heart and speak to you in a few minutes about what I have here. We are ready to say goodbye to this 2020. And just entering to 2021. Es un momento de parteaguas en la vida de todos. It's a moment that we can separate our life, I can say. Podemos ver el pasado. I can see the past. Y poder hacer una, hacer un, una especie de, de resumen de lo que fue nuestro año. In a way, tell you in a small way what our year was. Pero también podemos ver el futuro. And also we can see the future. Y en este puerto de la vida quiero tener un momento solamente. And I just want to stop in this time of life. Y poder decir que... Este año inició con muchas uh, este, expectativas. And just say we started this year with many dreams. Eh, viendo la obra del Señor extenderse como lo hemos visto a través de los últimos años. Seeing how the work of the Lord is just growing and we have been seeing this this last years. Y iniciamos teniendo seminarios que son como talleres para preparar a nuestros obreros. We started the year with seminars uh, with our workers and it's for training. Y parece que fuimos frenados justamente después del primero. And it seems that we started the first one and then we were stopped completely. Creo que todo ha redundado en bendición también. I think everything was a great blessing. Y hemos viajado estilo antiguo, o sea, como cuando tenía, empezamos pues, a, a, a trabajar en las misiones. We have traveled as the old times when we started uh, working in missions. Porque se detuvo en los viajes que teníamos que hacer a otros lugares y otros países y tuvimos que hacerlo de forma muy local. So, you know, we weren't able to travel uh, to other parts of the world as we we were doing it in the past. Pero, so, we were just uh, traveling in a local way. Pero esto hizo que pudiera tener yo una, un enfoque a lo que Dios nos ha dado. Pues. But this made me to think and just focus on what God has given us. Y pude ver cómo en el trabajo que hemos hecho he podido tocar la obra de Dios de forma más, 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 más real. And during this time, I think I've been able to touch the work that we've been doing for so many years in a more real way. I want to praise God and I want to thank you that you've been praying for us. Ha sido esa parte motora para que nosotros hagamos lo que estamos haciendo. That you've been like the mortar so we can um, do the things that we do. Que sin sus oraciones, sus and without oraciones, your prayers, your support, no your offerings, we can't arrive any place. A Dios porque I just praise God ha usado su vida. because he has used you. To take the gospel to those places where we're going. Just remember to pray that we want to start a refuge home, and and you know have something there for those people that really need to arrive in a safe place. Pray that we can have the health and we can have the strength to continue preparing workers so they can preach the gospel over Mexico. We have different projects in the Palomara Canyon. We want to finish our boarding school that we started remodeling. We have challenges in the Pima area. We want to finish some uh, buildings that we started this year. Y eso que les platiqué de la Sierra de 
de las sierras, pues, donde alguien nos dio un terreno para edificar un templo, así que el Señor puede hacer un lugar ahí para que la gente empiece a, a, a predicar y a servir al Señor. And he'll also just pray that where we are receiving donations of land, that we can build churches so the gospel can continue spreading. Todo esto es solamente una, una petición de visión y de oración. All this is so you can pray, you know, you can have like a clear way of what we're doing. Y mañana solamente lo sabe. The tomorrow only God knows. Gracias porque nos ha dado la vida hasta aquí. Thank you, you know, because you've been there with us and now we still have life to Muchos continue on. Muchos amigos ya no están con nosotros. Many friends are not here with us anymore. Aún muchos conciertos ya se Even pastors have left this year. Pero estamos aquí nosotros por la gracia de Dios. But we're still here by the grace of God. Todavía a la distancia nos podemos abrazar a usted y yo. And just, you know, in the distance we can give you a big hug today. Y, y decir delante de Dios. And just um, say before God. Empezamos un año con, con más visión, con más anhelo de servir al Señor. Y con, una, con, con un compromiso más fuerte entre nosotros. I think we're going to start a year, you know, just serving God, believing God, and, and being, you know, together, serving together. Les amo, les agradezco mucho su amor, todo lo que me hizo. We love you very much. We really appreciate everything that you do for Esperamos us. Esperamos cosas grandes. We are hoping for big, big things during this 2021. Así es que no tengo más que despedir este año con. So I just have to say, you know. Y dar la bienvenida para el año que, que, que está ahí. ahí. Thank you for being here with us and just, you know, tell you we're here. We're ready to receive sí, the 2021 with you. Sin ustedes no hacer Without nada. you, we couldn't do anything that y we estoy do. Seguro que sin ustedes no hacer nada. And I'm sure that if you don't continue with us, you know, we're not going to be able to, to do the things that we are planning or, you know, wishing we can do. Muchas gracias. So, you know, thank you very much and have a happy, happy new year. We love you.